Welcome everyone, in this video we are going to do something that is not very common for my videos. We are going to solve a problem and this is a problem that was uh, given to students in the uh, last year's uh, Tübitak Olympiads uh, of Turkey. Tübitak is the Science and Technology Institute of Turkey and it organizes some Olympiads, science, uh, physics, math, biology, that kind of. And we are going to be solving the first stage exams second question from booklet a so let me uh, draw the question for you and i attach the link to the original paper it is in turkish and if you have turkish you can read it so let me draw the picture though and it wasn't given to the students in the on the exam there wasn't a picture but we will have the picture ourselves so we told we are told that we have a cylinder like this and it is a uh, height of h i mean a height of 4h this is the level that is uh, filled up to a water okay so up to height 4h our cylinder is filled with water and we are told that we have a hole at height h above the ground so there is one hole here there will be other holes the other hole is at a height at a height at a height of 2h so this is the other height and there is one more hole left that is going to be at a height of 3h so this is 3h and you can picture what is going to happen the uh, water is going to flush out of these three holes okay and maybe it will come out with uh, like this it will come out horizontally this is quite important and it, the, it will have different speeds on different holes. Maybe this is called V1, this is V2, and this is V3. Now our water coming out of one of the holes is going to travel on the air and it is going to fall to the ground. And the other ones will do a similar thing as well. Maybe it will go like this and the other one will go like this. So if I call the distance traveled by the second hole, uh, the water that comes out of the first hole, L1, and if I call the others similarly, L2 and, and L3, the question is simple. We are asked to compare L1, L2, and L3. So the question is, which uh, which uh, water that comes out of which uh, hole will travel to the greatest distance on the ground or will they go to the equal distance all right which one will travel further which one will travel less or will they travel an equal distance i want to give you some time to think about this question because this is a nice question and it doesn't really come out of straightforward but i really want you to think about it okay if you're ready let's get started so I want to consider a general case and I'm, then, then I'm going to substitute my values for holes 1, 2 and 3. So in general, if we think in gen general, we're going to say the distance that we travel L is going to be the velocity that, that the water is flushing out of the holes and times the time. V times T, right? Distance is equal to velocity times time. So what we can conclude from here is that L1 is going to be V1 times T1. L2 is going to be V2 times T2. And L3 is going to be V3 times T3. Now, only thing left then is to figure out these six guys. Because at the end, we are trying to compare L1, L2, and L3. If we can express them in terms of common things like height or uh, or other uh, mathematical constants, numbers, uh, maybe gravitational acceleration due to gravity, some things like that, then we will be fine. So let's try to find the formula for the general V, the generic V. And actually, in my last video, I found the formula for velocity in this kind of a situation. So you can access that video from the cards right now. And I'm not going to derive that formula in this video. Actually, that was the reason why I uploaded last day's video. It was all prepa preparation for this. Everything was planned, my friends. <laughs> so, I, uh, in my last video, I proved that the velocity is going to be uh, is going to be v is equal to under the square root two g h, and h here is the height in this kind of a sense. 
if we have a point like this, it is at a depth of h, then this is the velocity. As I said, I proved this in my last video, so I'm not going to waste our time and your, not my time and not your time going over it in this video. Again, if you want, you can find it from the cards. And what about t? I will actually find the formula for t in this video. And let's do it here. For finding the t, I will choose the downward direction as the positive direction. And left will be positive as well. But anyways, maybe I should name them as y and x. Why do I put two positives? Like this. So if we consider the y direction of a generic motion in this case, I can say, I can say delta y is going to be equal to velocity initially in the y direction times time plus 1 over 2 the acceleration in the y direction again times time this time squared. So since our water is coming out of the hose horizontally, this v naught y times t term is going to be 0 because there is no initial velocity in the vertical direction. And this delta y will be, this delta y will be, well, let's refer to our picture, this picture. It is going to be this distance, right? Maybe we call this d. Because it is at the end, how, how much its position is going to change vertically. So it is going to be, oops, it is going to be d. And we're going to have 1 over 2 since we chose downwards as a positive direction. Acceleration due to gravity will be the acceleration. Not negative g, but just g. And we have t squared. And look at that. We were trying to find t and we are about to find t. If we multiply both sides by 2 and divide by g and take the square root, we get 2d divided by g under the square root. So right now we have... Formulas for V and T. These are generic formulas. These are general formulas. Now we want to substitute uh, our cases. V1, V2, V3, T1, T2, T3. Those are the six guys that we are trying to find. So let me go to the new page. We found that V, the general V, is equal to 2GH. H here is the distance to the top of the uh, container. And we found that T is equal to 2 d Divide by g. D here is the height from the ground. And I realize that it is kind of weird to use h for the depth and d for the height. Excuse me for that. But as I said, h here, this is the depth. And d here, <laughs> this is the height. It would have been much better if I did it the other way around. But never mind. So what about v1? Well, v1 is going to be... It is going to be the it is going to be two times g and what is its depth from the top of the container? Well, the first hole is here and it is at a height h above the ground. So the whole uh, height of the water is four h. Four h minus h is going to give us three h, which means we have two g and our depth is three h simply. And don't forget the square root. What about t one then and Oh boy, we should introduce some color writing. What is T1? I'm going to introduce color in a minute. What is T1? It is going to be, we need to figure the height. So what is the height for our first hole? As I argued a minute ago, it is H simply. It is right here. So we're going to have 2H divided by G under the square root. Never forget the square root. And let's introduce the color now. What about V2? V2 is going to be Again, 2g, we have the square root. What is the depth of our second hole? It is, uh, it is here, right here. It is uh, at the middle. It is at a height of 2h. We have a total height of 4h. 4h minus 2h will give you 2h. So we have 2h. And what about its uh, t value? Well, uh, the height is going to be, as I argued, 2h because it is at the middle. So we have 2 times... 2h divided by g under the square root. And now we only have v3 and uh, t3 left. So let's find them as well. What about v3? And let's separate this. This is the general formula. The general formulas actually. We have v3. It is going to be 2g. And we will have the depth value of our 
third hole. Well, it is at a height of 3h, so 4h minus 3h, it is at a depth of h. It has a distance h to the top of the container, to the top of the water level, actually. Our container may or may not be filled with water completely. It doesn't really matter. And we have T3. What is T3? Equal to, well, T3 is going to be equal to uh, using same kind of reasoning, we have 2. What is the height? It is simply 2h. So 3h, I mean. Oh, man, I forgot to how for I forgot how to read. It is 3h under the square root. And this is all good. We are very close to the end. I want to remind that the general formula for L, the distance traveled, is v times time. So velocity times time gives you the distance. And now let's figure out the values. So for L1. We will have multiply V1 and T1. Let's multiply. Then we have 6GH under the square root. 6GH under the square root times 2H divided by G under the square root. So these Gs will cancel and we will have H will come out and we will have the square root of 12. We could simplify this, but I won't. And notice that this we have a good sign here because... On the left, we have something in meters, and on the right, we have h, which is in meters, and we have the square root of 12, which is a number, so it doesn't have a unit. So we have the same unit on both sides of the equation. This means that we are on the right track. We might got it wrong, but we didn't do a huge dimensional mistake. We at least can assure that. And for L2, we're going to have, we're going to have v2 times t2. v2 is, as you can see here, 4gh under the square root and then we have again another 4h divided by g this time under the square root g's will cancel again h will come out we will have h times the square root of 16 of course that is just equal to 4 but let's leave it like that to make our comparison is easier and for l3 we're going to have they are here those values we have 2gh under the square root 6 and maybe I should have put the parentheses here. It is not 23H, obviously. But still, let's keep it consistent. We have 6, what was I And H, what was I saying? And divide by G. Cool. And then this means these Gs cancel. H again comes out of the square root. So we have H times the square root of 12. And look at this. We actually figured out the result. Let me... Write it here. We show that L2 is greater than L1, which is equal to L3. And this was, this was actually choice C, I believe, on the exam that was given to students. So what, I mean, this might be surprising to you because, I mean, look at this. Oops, look at this. The first hole and the second hole, the water that comes out of them, travels to the same distance. And how is this possible? Well, I will only say this. And you can figure out how this happens. You can even do a general case for it. The height value of one of them is the depth value of the other. Okay, so we, the first hole has a height of h, while the third hole has a depth of h. The first hole has a depth of 3, while the third hole has a depth of, has a height of 3. Okay, so their height and depth values uh, change. They switch, switch places. And as you can see, at the end, we multiply h and d, the depth and the height. So if we change the uh, order of multiplication, we get the same result. The answer doesn't change. So that is why actually L1 and L3 have the same distance. And we also show that L2 is greater than them. I hope this video was helpful. And by the way, I also want to add one thing. This system is open to the atmosphere. There is a peanut pressure. This is, I mean... Uh, this is important for this calculation. I didn't go over this, but on my uh, previous video about this, you can understand why this peanut is an important idea. And if it com uh, complicates your mind, never mind. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.